Good morning, Glenn. So um, the idea of this session is just to get more insight on your take on the FPNA process, the storytelling approach specifically, right? So uh, to start out, can you tell us a bit about what you're doing these days and uh, a little bit about your background? Sure. So I have uh, 26 years of experience uh, really in corporate FPA and and corporate strategy. Uh, I've worked primarily for public companies, although a little bit for, for some private companies as well. Uh, pretty big brand names that you, you may have heard of, Franklin Templeton, Visa, Charles Schwab could be among those. And uh, I've done every aspect of fp and that you can imagine. Uh, everything from just budgeting and reporting and business partnering to designing budget processes, forecast processes, uh, installing systems, the whole thing. So uh, that's, that's kind of a little bit about me. Oh, wow. Looks like you've been all over the spectrum as far as fp and goes. Um, so like in your opinion, uh, what would be the key elements of the data storytelling approach when it comes to fp and Well, the thing about telling a story is it's just like when you read a novel. You got to start off with the introduction of here's what you're doing, here are your characters. You got to take them through the arc and you got to come to the conclusion. And a lot of times where FPA fails to tell a good story is because they only stay within the financial numbers, the so revenues and expenses. This went up, that went down. Kind of refer to that as elevator analysis. It doesn't really tell you anything because you can look at the data itself and just come to the conclusion. But what you really want to do, where FPA can really succeed in storytelling, is to look at the underlying business metrics. Why did this go up? What's going on behind the data? Because so as an example, revenue doesn't grow by itself. You can't, you could say revenue went up 10%. Okay, fine. Why? Well, you had more clients, you launched a new product, you went into a new market, you had an advertising campaign. Whatever it happens to be, there's a reason behind. The number is going up. That's where the story sits. So you have to start with what are those business drivers and how do those business drivers connect to the financials? And that's really where the heart of the story is. That makes a lot of sense. I love, I love the novel analogy. So um, when the story is beginning, uh, you're focusing a lot on the business metrics. But like, so when we consider it from the perspective of FPNA managers and CFOs, what do they need to get started? Whether it's tools and strategies and plans. I understand it all begins with the business metrics, but more specifically? Well, you need a couple of things. First of all, you need data that connects to each other. So let's just start there. Whether you're working in Excel or you're using a, a system, the data needs to connect. You need to understand how your client data flows with your product data, flows into your financial data and all that stuff that usually happens in the background. It, doing it in Excel is usually the way people start, but then they start moving into something a little more robust because you really want to automate a lot of those data connections. With that said, you also need to have that trust and understanding with the business. I've never seen an FP&A organization be able to tell a good story without having a very strong relationship with business leaders. They need to be out there, engage with those business leaders, meet with them on a monthly basis, talk to them, not just about what finance needs, but what their needs are. What are their strategies? What are their goals? Because if you don't understand what's going on in the business, how do you tell that story and how it ties back to the financial? FP&A is that unique area of the company that touches every aspect of a company. It can touch any business leader at any time. And you, if you stay only on the financial side and looking at here's what's going on in my revenues or how I'm doing against budget or my expenses or my headcount, you're going to miss the, the, the story. And you really have to have that regular meeting with your head of operations, your head of sales, your you know, director of marketing, whoever it happens to be, and talk to them about what they're trying to do with the business and look at the results that they're generating and how that ties back to the financial results that you're seeing. And when you connect the two, you tell a much better story. And that's really where it needs to begin from a FP&A organizational standpoint. Awesome. That is, ties in nicely to my next question, actually. So uh, when these FP&A leaders have the story, how do they go about translating those insights, those stories into action items for their organization? How does that work? Well, you want to yeah, be careful. 
here. This is finance does not drive the company. And if you think finance drives the company, you got a wrong perception of your company. So finance is it's there to help the people in the business drive the company. You know, so finance doesn't generate new customers, doesn't create new products, uh, it doesn't enter new markets. That's what the business is out there to do. So really what you want to do is to make sure that you are setting up with the right trust and relationships that you have with those leaders to gather that information. Now, when it comes to how do you tell that story, that's where you take that business knowledge with the finance knowledge and you put it together and you tell that story in a very sharp, brief way. But the number one thing you have to do is be unbiased. Try and avoid the, the language like they did a great job or they really underperformed or they did a poor job in this. You don't want to go and make judgments in your analysis. Keep your analysis straightforward. Revenues grew by 20% because of a promotion that was led last, last week by marketing that was directly tied to a 15% increase in revenue of this product or something like that. That is factual. Don't go over and say, marketing did a great job because we saw this result. Avoid all of the contextual arguments and keep it to fact. Everything should be fact-based. There should be no disputes in anything that you say. Because the second you start putting your own judgment in there, now you start losing credibility. Just the, my, my number one advice is just keep it to the facts. Okay, perfect. So basically that comes to, you know, just focusing on the right data. And that actually answers my uh, next question as well. I was just going to ask how do FPN leaders go about conveying the right message to their respective stakeholders, right? You pretty much answered that quite a bit. Well, part of it is I'm going to add to that a little bit because I think the question is not just about what, you, what the content is, but sometimes it's about the presentation as well, right? So when, when you're going over and you're trying to tell your story, Yes, you have to have the information, but you have to present it in the right way. Uh, I would recommend that you want to be, you know, in a written bullet points, you want to be short, brief, don't write pages, or don't write paragraphs, just keep nice short sentences, even phrases. Uh, you could use data tables, but keep in mind that some people aren't always numbers people. And depending on the story, graphs are another great way to do it. Uh, don't go crazy with, you know, a bunch of pictures and colors and other things. Just keep it nice and simple. You can show a trend graph, a pie graph, a bar graph, whatever it happens to be. My recommendation is some of the best dashboards that I've ever seen have a combination of graphical elements, data tables, and bullet points. If you keep everything to just data or a graph in your, in your dashboards, where do you tell the story? You're leaving the story to be interpreted by the, by the reader of that dashboard. Go over and have a little, I always like to take my dashboard, take a sheet of paper, divide it into quadrants. And in one quadrant, you could have a graph. In one quadrant, you could have a, a data table. Maybe you have another type of graph in the third quadrant, quadrant. And you always leave one quadrant for a bullet point analysis. This way, you can make sure you're telling the data and the story in the right way so it can't be misinterpreted. That makes sense. So when it comes to analytics, uh, visualizations, uh, you mentioned that you use, use Power BI, all, you know, all the similar tools in this space. Uh, have you used Power BI write back solutions? Uh, I have not. I have not done a lot of work with Power BI, just a little bit. We, one of the companies I worked for used Power BI as a uh, way to get to a data warehouse, the data that was being stored there. And it was yeah. just to go over and, and pull the data. So that, that was kind of the extent that I used oh. Power BI. Okay. So uh, as we're discussing, you know, modern FPN solutions, what in your opinion, is the role of these modern FPN solutions, the up and coming ones, in helping feed this data story? You know, uh, a system can be used in a lot of different ways. The number one thing is, is that if you want to build a, an efficient FPNA organization, you have to make sure you can automate all the things that can be automated. You cannot automate the analysis, you cannot automate the storytelling. That's where you want to focus your team and have them spend most of their time. You can automate how a report is populated, taking data from GL, from a GL system, from other data sources to go over and bring in those business analytics. You could go over and standardize your monthly reporting to make sure everybody's seeing the data in the exact same way. All that stuff, that's where your, your system really comes into play. You can also go over and use your system for uh, 
forecasting and budgeting and modeling. In fact, a lot of new systems are even coming out with uh, more uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning approaches yeah. so that they are anticipating where the changes are or helping to call out things that need to be identified and analyzed. So to me, that's kind of where these systems are headed. And the idea being is that you will never be able to have a system tell a story that's always going to go over and say, here's the data, and then let the system populate the data for you and let your analysts not just tell the story, but also learn about the business and connect all that together. And that is where you're really going to be adding more value. Perfect. So these systems, you mentioned one of the things, uh, predictive analytics, right? That's big these days. But in your mind, what would be, uh, what would an ideal FPA system look like? What would, what should it be able to accomplish ideally? Uh, it should just to be keep a, broad strokes. Yeah. Yeah. It should right. be a database that houses both uh, financial data and business metrics. It should be able to easily be queryable, if I could create a word there, uh, so that you can create your queries and be able to pull the data out in the way that with, with the right filter so you know that you're pulling the, the right data that you need rather than just taking everything and then you have to use Excel to sift through that data. It should be able to produce automated reports um, and even be able to deliver reports in a way where you don't even have to touch it if it's just purely going to be uh, a report that's showing a particular you know, data set or whatever. Uh, and it should be customizable. This way you could really adapt it to your business because at the end of the day, if you are not, have, if you don't have a system that's designed to, you know, in the way that your system in that, or sorry, that your company is structured, then you're going to have a hard time with that system. So really that's what the system should be used for. And it's really about creating that automation so that your team can do the things that the system can't. Awesome. Okay. Um, so like, you know, I think that answers most of my questions, but anything ed else you'd like to add for, you know, just general advice for FPN leaders that they would find valuable. I think you've provided a ton of great advice here and yeah, but anything you'd like to add? Um, yeah, you know, just in closing, uh, the one thing that's important, and this is not, I can't emphasize this enough. When you're managing an FP&A team, there are really two sides to it. There is the, you got the data and the system side of things, which is going to be more technical. It's the production, that type of, you know, that type of work. The other side is building out trust, coming up with the right analysis, telling the right story. And one of the key aspects to be successful there is really empathy. Try and put yourself in the position of the people that you're presenting your data to or that you're meeting with. What do they need? If you go out to your business partners with what you think you want to have accomplished and you're not thinking about what they need to, to accomplish, you're missing the boat. You need to go over and show them that you're going to be a good business partner and think about their business and try to be proactive with them because that's how you're going to generate that additional trust where now they're going to be providing you with more insights and information that will make your analysis that much more powerful. Okay, great. Thank you so much for your time today, Glenn. My yeah. pleasure. Thanks for, thanks for having me.